Hi, good evening. Thanks for joining us uh, for a quick look into the Warren Article Number 6, the project at Litchfield Middle School. I'm Mike Jetty, the Superintendent of Schools, and I'm joined tonight by David Ross, who is our Director of Facilities, and Jennifer Grantham, who is the Principal of the Middle School. And tonight we're going to uh, talk about the elements that are on the project, how we intend to reinvigorate Litchfield Middle School to last another 35 years and serve the needs of the students and community. Uh, I'm going to have Dave give a quick summary of some of the things that we're going to see tonight, and then uh, Jen will let you know uh, some of the benefits for the educational environment in the school. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to say hello to the people watching at home, and uh, I'm going to take you on the tour. We're going to go over our HVAC needs and uh, some of the energy costs that uh, these things are failing. I'm going to show you boilers, I'm going to show you leaks in the floors and ceilings, and I'm also going to show you leaks in pipes. So. You speak of making our space a little bit more comfortable for us, and I think that's really going to help our learning environments as a whole in regards to making sure that kids aren't too cold um, as heating systems fail, and also talking about um, taking some wasted space in our locker rooms and making it some much needed educational space that we can use for our students. Excellent. Well, let's get after it and go on a walk. So our first stop on the tour is actually here in the hallway, the main hallway of the school. Uh, so when the building was built, it's got forced hot water running throughout, and the pipes have really started to fail over the 35 years that they've been uh, running hot water through them. So we're noticing now that there are a significant number of leaks that are occurring, mm -hmm. and Dave's going to go into greater detail about some of the leaks and, and the damage that it's causing yeah. to the building. So the building was built with forced hot water piping, and every 20 feet is a Victaulic fitting with a rubber seal. When the boiler water goes cold, such as a day like today, where it was 60 degrees, the boilers were not running. When the water gets cold, the seals shrink, and uh, it causes leaks throughout the entire building. Here is a perfect example of a leak that we just can't seem to get fixed. We're forever changing the ceiling tile because when they get wet and they don't dry out, they start to turn black, and that's not a good thing. So I cut up a brand new one, probably change them once a month. So one of the things with this project is that the forced hot water system will be eliminated. It'll be replaced with air source heat pumps that'll provide the heat throughout the building. Um, and those air source heat pumps will be powered by a solar array that's on the building. So it'll be clean and green energy and will eliminate the need to have hot water running through pipes all throughout the building. So it's a, an energy upgrade that's going to save taxpayers both money and our maintenance department ongoing expense of replacing tiles. Uh, you know, and this includes labor, you know, Dave having to come over, make the cut, clean it up, etc. Uh, it really is a significant improvement for us. Next up, we're going to be in a classroom and take a look at what's going on there. Okay, so now we're in a regular classroom at Litchfield Middle School, and I just want to talk a little bit about the features. The building itself is actually pretty solid. It's got uh, cinder block walls, and there's a layer of insulation and then it has an outer layer of brick that's been adhered. So what we found is that the walls themselves have a lot of thermal mass and help to keep the energy in the building. Um, the issues that we've uncovered with the building are some of the weaker links that go along with it. So last summer, using all ESSER funds, funds that the school district was able to obtain through the COVID grant, we were able to replace all the windows in the school. So the windows that were in here were wood-framed, original to the building, a lot of the seals in the windows had failed, and we were able to upgrade them to a triple glazed, highly efficient window, um, and that helped to button up the envelope of the building. And now there are two issues that are left in the school that we need to address. And Dave's gonna explain issue number one, uh, which has to do with, here you can see the, um, the baseboard heating that runs throughout the building, and you can see where the weak link is located at the bottom. So we've got a major air leak down where the Foundation meets the wall, or the wall meets the foundation. Uh, it's leaking air. We have a thermal imaging gun here that actually shows blue where all that air is leaking. That leak goes around the entire perimeter of the exterior of this building, the entire envelope. I think we also talk a little bit about what that means for the comfort of our students when they're here in the classroom. Yeah. Um, so as, as they're sitting and the cold air is coming from underneath or the cold air is coming from up above, um, there's very varied temperatures with our students in a classroom. In, in cold weather climate, when it's 12 degrees outside, the variation in the in the classrooms range anywhere from 85 with the super high heat blowing to 55 because it's the cold air coming in. So we're trying to make that better for the learning environment for our students overall. 
So one of the last upgrades that we need to make to the outside of the building is where the slab is exposed directly to the cold outside air. We're going to put insulation against it and tie that insulation down into the earth. So it'll sort of uh, make the building tied in with the earth uh, and allow us not to have so much heat being lost there and warming the space up on this side of the room. The other major problem that we have is a similar problem that's occurring up at the ceiling. It's actually up at the roof, so it's above the ceiling at the roof level, and Dave will explain that for you. So we realized during the construction of the summit that that was never sealed. There's a three inch gap from the decking and the concrete block. Three inch gap, and that goes all the way around the entire perimeter of the building, building as well. We want to seal that, we want to insulate it. Um, there's a massive air leak there, which is a, a major heat loss and air conditioning loss as well. So what's great is we got the whole new roof, but now we need to seal up the building from that brand new roof that was right up there. And this is sort of the last gap that needs to be fixed and sealed in the building, um, and that will provide much greater comfort. So uh, if you add up three inches surrounding the entire perimeter of the school, it's almost equivalent to having like a 26 by 26 foot hole in the wall. It's a significant amount of air that needs to be sealed up. And, uh, we've tested it in two rooms, it's made a difference, and we're confident that this upgrade is also needed throughout. Okay, so now on our tour, we're next up in the boiler room. Uh, the boiler room is original to the school, and there's just a lot of needs in here. I'm gonna have Dave explain it because it's much more of his uh, his situation and what he knows the best. So I would love Dave, to show us around. Yep. So a lot of our fittings and our, our shutoffs are all leaking, as you can see. The seals, if you can focus in close, you can see the brakes and all the rubber seals. To take this stuff apart, I mean, look at that. These bolts are so rusty, you'd have to cut every one of them. Here's another component, all rusted out. You can see where the water drips. Now, these things start to leak pretty much in the summertime when the boilers get shut off, actually springtime. You shut the boiler off, the water gets cold, and all the seals shrink. They no longer seal. Uh, we, we're dealing with leaks quite a bit. Second, I'd like to point out the boiler we've been having issues with. Each boiler has sections. Each section has seals. And as you can see, we blow out a seal, blow out a seal. The only way to replace these seals is I got to take all this equipment off, I got to take all the sections out, and they're all cast iron, they all weigh about 500 to 1,000 pounds. You got to redo all the seals and then gingerly put them back together. It's an absolute nightmare. If this happens in the middle of winter, we're down to one boiler, and we could be in big trouble. So one other thing just to point out on the boiler is actually the cost of these. These are all oil fire boilers, um, and the price of oil, as we all know, has gone up significantly this year. So even trying to budget on how to keep oil in the tank uh, has turned into a problem for us, and it's very expensive for the taxpayers. So shifting away from fossil fuels into renewable energies will, will uh, allow us to have a predictable amount of energy costs that we need to budget for each year. Um, unlike the unpredictable costs that we have when we're dependent on oil. There's another thing about oil that's important to point out, and that is the storage tank for the oil is the original tank. So you, can you tell us about the status of that tank? I certainly will. It's original to the school as well. It's 35 years old. Um, it's a metal tank. It's what they had back then. It's 10,000 gallons, folks. That's a lot of oil. Uh, actually, the last inspection, it, it basically borderline passed they allowed us to pass it and use it because we still had it full of product. And it takes a long time, a lot of paperwork, about six months through DES to get that thing out of the ground. We have to have a plan in place. So it's a lot of work. They allowed us one more uh, time to use the tank until the next inspection, and then it's going to fail and it has to be removed. Another thing I'd like to point out that we left out is the controls. All the controls on all these boilers, sensors, uh, turns on and offs, everything has failed. I literally have to come in and shut the disconnect off in, when it's too hot, or turn it back on when it's cold. It's unbelievable, it's all day. And the key thing with that oil tank underground is that uh, we were looking at the cost of removing and replacing an oil tank. And once we invest that kind of money into it, we're then wedded, I think, to maintaining fossil fuels for many years into the future. Because if you're gonna spend that kind of money to upgrade the tank, you then have to spend that kind of money to upgrade the boilers, um, and you're then attached to fossil fuels on a continuing uh, volatile market. So we believe this project, which gets us out of the fossil fuels, is exactly the way to go and a smarter way to spend taxpayer dollars. Dave, you want to show them the controls and the way it actually works yeah, in here? Yeah, I'll turn everything back on. All right. 
Okay, so in a normal school day, if they were cold, I would have to literally hit all these controls. When they get too hot, I gotta repeat, shut everything off. That's our controls. So right now we're just in the main electrical section of the building. Uh, because when we make the switch over to the solar, we're also going to upgrade the electrical in the building. So this is original to the building. Um, as we learned uh, back at uh, Griffin, when we had a power outage and a main circuit failed, it took us about two weeks to get that circuit replaced. Um, had that happened during the school year, it would have been a big problem. It did happen in the summer. And that was actually a 1970s era component. So, you know, it wasn't uh, something that goes back to the 50s or earlier. So we're facing a similar problem here at the middle school. So upgrading this is important. These units get very hot. Dave, you want to just explain? Yeah, so this is our transformer, 480 volts. We have six of them in this building. Right now I have a temperature gun on the top. That's, so, not, that's not good. So it really is uh, generating quite a bit of heat energy. And so upgrading these to more modern um, transformers will be more energy efficient um, and will result in savings for the taxpayers also. So this will also be part of the project this summer. So now we're in one of the hallways at Litchfield Middle School. And I just wanna show uh, everybody that here we have an old uh, fluorescent lighting fixture that's run throughout the building. These are T8s. We've already done one upgrade from the old T12s that were in place to the T8s to save some money. Um, but our plan as part of this project is actually to replace the lighting throughout the building with highly efficient LED lighting. And a couple of features that I want to point out on this, uh, in addition to being a highly efficient LED light, it also has a motion sensor that's incorporated and built right into it. Um, and what that allows is that during the day, if there's nobody in the hallway, the light actually dims down and then as soon as somebody comes along, it brightens back up again. So it saves energy costs by responding to the usage in the hallway itself. And at night, like now, there's nobody in the rest of the hallway and all the lights are running full on because they're either on or they're off. This will result in long-term savings for us. And all of the savings that we achieve, we're putting right back into paying for the project. So it's a nature of squeezing energy savings out of the, out of the building and then using that to help pay for the upgrades that we've done. And what's great about the new lights in the classroom is that that will allow teachers to set warm or cool settings for those lights and set it at the level that the children need in the classroom based on what's going on. If they don't need anything that's really bright at that moment, they can turn that down, um, which also will save that energy. Plus the maintenance costs as well. As far as changing light bulbs, these are LEDs. They should be good for 25, 30 years at best. And honestly, it's not just the light bulbs also the ballasts and other features that our maintenance department is constantly swapping out and replacing. So um, it saves time and money on the labor side, but also on the energy side. So this is a key feature of the project that we're proposing. So one other key feature of the project that we're proposing is to gain a little bit of extra classroom space. Most people remember that we had four portable classrooms in the front yard, produced a whole bunch of security concerns for the school, we had fifth graders all day long coming and going from the building with a key. Uh, there were no bathrooms out there, so they'd have to come in to use bathrooms. That's not the way that we want to function in today's world. So um, we were able to eliminate those and to move all the classrooms inside, but it's a little tight on elbow space. So what we realized is that we either, not, either need to propose an addition onto the building or find a way to capture space out of it. And one area that we turn to are the locker rooms. When the school was built in 1987, it really used 1960s thinking about the way uh, students would change and shower for PE. So we're going to show you space that is completely wasted and that we can repurpose and gain two classroom spaces out of it. So we believe that that will address classroom needs for many years to come by claiming space that just is not being used. And also by maintaining that locker room space for those students that are astronaut athletes that will still have that opportunity to use the space to change for sports and for co-curricular activities, but really gaining that much needed educational space. So it'll be two smaller locker rooms uh, with a single shower for somebody who may wish to shower um, and a, a place for a team to change, but it is not gonna be the situation that you're gonna see in a minute. So if you've never been in the girls' locker room at Litchfield Middle School, <laughs> come on along. <laughs> 
I'll go first. Yep, <laughs> ladies first. Okay, so right now we're looking into the girls' locker room, and you can see Principal uh, Grantham and Jen is walking right toward us. Um, there really is a series of these individual changing areas and individual showers. None of this is being utilized. There are no students today who would come in here and uh, utilize the showers that are provided in this locker room area. So it results in quite a bit of wasted space. Let's go a little deeper in and take a look at what it looks like on the grand scheme. So here you can see that we're inside the girls' locker room and there's just row upon row upon row of that shower situation that is set up. Uh, the overall space in here, including the other portion that we're going to look at, will allow us to actually create a thousand foot uh, classroom out of this space. So roughly a thousand foot classroom can be reclaimed from this existing girls' locker room space. So here you can see that there's considerable amount of space that really is not utilized. The lockers are all empty, um, they're not utilized. We believe that a smaller team room that looks something like this could easily be created out of the space and allowing all the rest of the space in here to be turned into a classroom. And this space was designed with the idea of a male and female PE teacher. And as you know for LMS at this point, we have two male teachers. And therefore, this room cannot be supervised during a PE class. So it is off limits to our students at this time. There's so many corners and places for supervision to happen. They get lost behind the corners. Um, so we just really don't use the space at all. Now let's go to the boys' locker room and take a look. Unlike in the girls' locker room, which has all those individual units taking up space, the boys' room still has the traditional game shower. And quite frankly, there is nobody in grades 5 to 8 who is going to come in here with a bunch of other students and take a shower. It's unused, wasted space in our middle school locker room, and we really need to repurpose it. We still believe that we can get a single private shower for an individual to use, um, in addition to a smaller team room, but that this space is just not the way uh, students today or in the future are going to um, shower before or after PE class or games. So in this space, again, you can see that the lockers are really underutilized. There's a ton of real estate in here. Lots of nooks and uh, crannies also um, <coughs> that we can use to reclaim classroom space. So rather than building a multi-million dollar addition on, uh, this portion of the project will renovate space we already have, space we're already heating, space we're already able to light, into usable classroom space for the future. So another key part of this project is that we really need to update the kitchen here at Litchfield Middle School. This is in our capital improvement plan and it was approved by the capital improvement committee uh, because the kitchen is undersized. One thing that we have is the cooler itself. This is both the cooler and the freezer and it takes up a tremendous amount of space inside the kitchen. So if you look above, you can see the wasted space there. And what we want to do is take the cooler um, and update to a more energy efficient cooler that would be located outside of the building. And that would be uh, allow us to have more space inside the kitchen itself. And as you look around the kitchen, you'll see that uh, the folks who are in here preparing meals for um, 350 or 400 students are really right on top of each other. There's not a lot of room to move and to do that to the best of their ability. So now we just want to talk about some of the outdated equipment that's in the LMS kitchen. Um, it really has made it difficult for our staff to be able to cook meals. We end up being uh, rewarming meals because of the equipment that we have available. So by updating it to more modern uh, equipment, we'll be able to provide a different menu option for our middle schoolers. This right here is the only cooktop in the entire kitchen. So you can see that there are two burners, and you'll also see that it's wedged up against uh, this unit and this unit. So if you were gonna boil a pot of water to make pasta, you'd be relatively limited on what you could do because of the size of the unit itself. Um, this is the uh, steamer, and so when we open it up, you can see that it's relatively small, um, and so it makes it so that they are um, going very quickly from lunch to lunch in order to keep stuff going. And they have to start early, and then the food has to sit inside the warmer waiting until the students come through. Because if they were cooking the order by the lunches, they would not be able to keep up. It just cannot produce meals that quickly for the schedule. This is a steam table um, that is not utilized. It just is not functional space, and so we wanted to claim that. And then the last item is the oven, uh, which is a convection oven. Uh, but again, if you were to take a product like a frozen pizza and try to reheat it, 
uh, you actually have to do that and then put it in the warmer in order to store it until students come along because there just is no capacity to actually cook it in time and have it freshly served for the lunches. So renovating this space is a high priority for us, both to get to a better level of efficiency and also be able to provide the quality meals that we can in the other kitchens. One last thing to point out is that the hood, which covers this entire area, what, what we've learned through our energy study is that it is incredibly oversized. The amount of air that is being evacuated through that hood, um, then you have to heat and warm that air and replace that air. Um, and so the goal is to get one that is properly sized for the kitchen and for the needs, which will also help to reduce energy costs for us. Because it's not only sucking the air out of our kitchen, but out of our cafeteria. There's no heaters in this area, but there are return vents up there on the wall that suck all the warm air out of that cafeteria. And right outside, to you folks of Litchfield, not, not so efficient. I'm coming at it from the student perspective at this point in time. Our students have a very small area here as they come through the cafeteria to make some very quick decisions as we're trying to move 85 to 95 students through this space in a very limited window. Um, the line often backs up into the cafeteria past the stage and sometimes for breakfast we even go down the main corridor because you just can't fit the kids in this space as they're walking through. They can get their salad, their milk. We'll really redefine the space to make it much more efficient and be able to get students through the line much quicker so they have more time to eat. Thank you for joining us tonight on this tour of Litchfield Middle School. We hope that you can see that these really are a list of needs that we need to invest in our building. These are not a bunch of wants, but in fact, what is necessary in order to ensure that Litchfield Middle School continues to provide a good educational experience for the youth of Litchfield for the next 35 years. Um, and so the voting on this will take place on uh, Tuesday, March 8th. Uh, we encourage you to come to the polls. If you have questions, our website has a ton of information on it, including some financial breakdown that gets into the overall project needs. Please ask us questions about those. There are some one-pagers that we're trying to produce in order to have available to voters um, so that you understand what it is that we're doing with this project. So again, thank you for joining us. We believe this is a smart investment um, and the best way to proceed and will really position us for the next, uh, the next 35 years.